after a century of architecture celebrating abstraction, the kind of impetus of this work is just to be incredibly literal uh, about the process of building, about like what, what architecture actually is as a terrestrial phenomenon and entity. It turns out there's great novelty in that because um, in my view, that's where all of its actual ecological impacts are, all of its, I think, real political impacts are played out. Um, it's in the kind of physical, material, energetic flows that underlie architecture. You know, once you have that systems ecology uh, kind of map, the kind of web of life of material and energy that supports building, that map also becomes a perfect map of all the political and social relations as well. The Seagram building is, is one of the last buildings built from materials. Uh, after the Seagram building, buildings are assembled from products, you know, things that corporate entities have, have as many proprietary properties as they do structural or thermal properties. So there's a huge transformation and a kind of neoliberal transformation of the political economy of architecture uh, in that sense. There's a horizontal surface and there's a vertical surface. And we worked really closely with Keel and Peter to, to coordinate those two surfaces. So the vertical surface, the wall behind the tables is a kind of immersive um, dynamic visualization of a lot of the history of the site. A lot of the archival documents, photographs, construction photographs, maps, as Keel described about the material flows. And then on the horizontal surface itself is a kind of a very precisely loose collection. Mm -hmm. Based on the weights of the elements, helped us sort of precisely uh, locate the elements on the table as well. So glass, bronze and brass, and then stone. Um, and within the stone, we had a couple different uh, artifacts and pavers and tiles from travertine to uh, the green uh, marble to the pink granite in the brass category. And uh, we had basically uh, prototypes or replicas of the extrusions in the Seagram building that we displayed um, amongst their maintenance uh, sheets uh, and documents, the correspondences between the Smiths um, and, and the client. And the tables were also reconfigurable, so they create their own connections. So the glass starts to overlap with the uh, chemicals um, that were used to make the silica and the, and the component of the glass panel, but also it would start to visually also overlap with um, the brass extrusions. Um, and together they form a collection, um, material culture of the building. These objects that allow us to on the one hand, picture the Seagram's building, but at the same time, dissociate ourselves from from the from the imagined reality of the of the Seagram's, and and give us instead the real reality of the Seagram. Those acres are coming back to haunt us in all kinds of ways, whether it's whether it's political or environmental, climatic, etc. So there's a lot of reasons to pay attention to those acres as much as the acres of Midtown Manhattan or, or other places.